My name is Frederica Knabe and I used to work with USC Canada from 1991 to 2001. And uh, so I never met a lot of myself, unfortunately, but um, my introduction to Lotta was very intense and very personal because I took part of her job. I was the director of Canadian programs and so I did travel overseas to get to know the programs and uh, usually spend a month or so in one of the programs and then I traveled part of the country to talk to students, to groups, to about volunteers and to make sure that uh, I keep the volunteer movement going and I talk to media to keep the image going, the re reputation of, of USC going. And it was a fa I mean, the most, one of the most fascinating times of my life, really. And traveling across Canada, when I was relatively new to Canada, uh, I'm German background, so I have the Eastern European uh, connection that uh, Lotta had. Um, and, and so I connected with people immediately, with volunteers I stayed in their houses, I didn't go into hotels. I traveled the cheapest way possible, exactly that she did. Uh, volunteers drove me around and they were telling me stories. They were telling me crazy stories about how they met Lotta. They either were in grade three or four and she came to speak to their class and I remember that 30 years later. And others had worked with her, had volunteered and she was very rigid and very uh, effective in terms of getting them to do the work. They didn't want to linger anybody around. She didn't want anything fancy. It was always very simple, simple food and simple outlook because all the money that was raised was going to go overseas. So uh, I, it was for me indirectly a major learning experience to know about her. So I read, read about her and I then actively went out to talk to people about her because I felt that what it was important for me, playing the role that I did in USC Canada, but also it was important, I think, for all the people who knew her, that they had somebody there they could share their experiences with and their memories, and that the memories would not go away, they would continue um, for a long time. And she made sure she wouldn't, didn't want any fuss if the if the volunteers wanted to organize something a little bit more uh, fancy, he said no. She wanted to. She always wanted to make sure that nothing was wasted. You know. So, and the reason, one of the reasons they told me, the volunteers told me, one reason for a uniform was there were two reasons for a uniform. One, she was a very short and little person, and she felt in 1945 to have any respect amongst all these men, because of very few women, she was the only woman uh, often amongst all these men, that she needed to have something to give her status. So she invented the uniform, which was inspired by military, by Salvation Army. But later on, she said it was very efficient, because she had two uniforms and a few blouses. And so she could travel across Canada for three months or more, and she didn't have a, a, a lot of a big suitcase because she had her uniform, she got them cleaned and then she was having her blouses and that was it. And everybody recognized her, she didn't have an evening gown, she didn't need anything else, and that was it. So it was very efficient. And so she didn't have to worry about any of that. One of the reasons we started Jottings, which USC's newsletter called Jottings, it's based, it was actually one of our early ideas, because she wrote Jottings. Uh, and she wrote to everybody all the time. The massive of uh, material. Both, both. She had it typed by somebody, but also she wrote it long. She wrote from everywhere she was. She wrote notes to people. She always thanked people right away, and very personal, with always a personal story about what it did in Lesotho, in Swaziland, and you know wherever it was, Bangladesh. She always had a very lively story. And I mean, I'm a storyteller, so when I was telling stories to the kids, they said, yes, you know, that's what Dr. Lotta told that teacher. Dr. Lotta told the stories like that, you know. <laughs> it was, it, that's what really kept people so involved. She always wrote telling stories. And when she went around, she told stories. It was always her, her motto was to, to build tomorrow today.
right? So you needed everybody to work on the future now. And so that always required training, you know, wherever it was. It, it could be agriculture in some countries, but you particularly focused on women, which was the other unusual thing for USC um, and for her, because she always felt that women were really the resource that should be needed and was abandoned and, uh, and was not sufficiently used. So she focused on women. In, uh, she didn't also have men working for her, obviously, but she tried to focus on women developing skills to look after themselves and their children. And she was very strong on children education. There's a lot of the volunteers I met had met Lotta the first time when they went in primary school. Lotta came to grade three and four and five, and those kids went home, told their parents, and it started a whole you know, different words for their life. They never forgot it. And they told me they never forgot Lotta coming to their class almost to the date when it happened in 58 or 62, whatever it was. And they remembered that it was such an impression on them that they became volunteers at an early age.